Can you do me a favor and read this clause for me? Uh, uh I think that's magic rock. It is. So, Mado Saki. Mado Saki. Mado Saki. Oh, Suki? Se. Ah, Suki. Se. Se. Seki. Hi. Hi. Seki o nesunda toki. Hi. What does this mean? Okay. Uh, so time period, kind mm -hmm. of. So basically the time when what happened? The time when nesunda. So sleep. Good guess. Um, you're thinking about nemuru? Nusumu is mm. to steal. I see. What Nusumu. has been stolen? Uh, Madoseki. Who's Madoseki? Oh, magic rock? Yep. The magician. So, uh, magic magic yeah. so when the magical rock was stolen. Awesome. Can you read this for mm. me? Jishin. Hi, you seem like oneself. And can you read this word for me? Uh, madoseki. Perfect. So, made is something you probably already know, which means until. For example, can you read the first sentence for me? Sakara yoru made benkyo shimasu. Hi. Shimashita. What do you think this means? So I'm going to study this afternoon. Oh, this Good morning. guess. So first off, let's go look at the tensing of benkyo. It ends with a ta. Do you know what ta tells us in mm. Japanese? So have study. Yes. Past tense. So I did study when. Asa kara yoru made. Asa kara yoru made. So mm, morning kara yoru. Okay, so it's like asa kara yoru. Hi. Morning so kara. Of, yes. Do you know what kara means? Kara has two possible meanings. So it's like I was thinking of kuru, but it's not that. Yeah. Um. It doesn't really mean kuru, which is the come. So one meaning of kara is from. The other meaning of kara is because. And it means from when it occurs after a noun, and it means because when it occurs after a clause or little base basically when it occurs after a baby sentence. So asa, which is morning, is that a noun or something else? What is asa? Uh well in this case it's a noun. Yes, asa is a noun. So this means from morning, we have made, which is until. So from morning until yoru, you know what yoru means? Yoru is night. Hi. So in other words, I studied from morning until night. So made mm -hmm. is until, and it just gets added to whatever is our basically our limit. We basically we stop when we hit until. So another thing you might say is ore jishin made kasu basically means to erase myself all the way until I do not exist anymore. So basically to completely mm -hmm. disappear. It's a kind of a way to basically say including myself. It's kind of what insinuates. So perhaps I disappear something else along with myself. But I am the the I'm something that disappeared with an object. So it's probably mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Okay. Tablet was acting weird. Okay, do you know what Shimao tells us? Shimao. Uh, like to do shimas. Good guess. It. I definitely thought they were related at some point in my Japanese journey. Shimao means mm. to do completely, and the majority of the time it has a oh no kind of connotation. So a lot of times you'll see this added to the end of Japanese sentences to mean oh no. If you watch a lot of anime, you probably will hear shimatta when um something bad so, so. happens. That is literally the past tense of shimao. So literally is, mm -hmm. they've done it. They did it now. 
Um, but it's meaning, gosh darn it. Oh no, this has happened. Hi. Hi. Um, and the way how you add this to the end of the sentence is that the main verb of the sentence should be in te form. For example, do you know what the te form of kesu is? Uh, kesu, so be. What was it turned into? Kite? Kesu turns into kite? Uh, no, that doesn't really make sense. Not kite. really. Kite? Um, so oh. kiku, kiku can turn Hi. into kite. Hi. And um, kiru can turn into uh, kite. So there are verbs that can have ki in it. Kesu, though, kesu doesn't have ki in it. Kesu has ke. Okay, hi. Hi. Hmm. So kesu, with the su at the end, anything that ends with su in Japanese is going to turn into shite in te form. So kesu, keshite. Keshite, to erase. Hi. So if I want to hmm. say, oh, no, erase, I'd say keshite shimau. Keshite now, shimau. All languages have some amount of slurring that goes on. And Japanese is one of the few languages that expresses this in their writing system. So in English, when we have slurring, things our writing is like, this is how it's written. We have to write it this way. In Japanese, you will almost always see it written. So when a character is talking, for example, I... rather than saying te shimau, it will be slurred into chi mao or chao or something like that, which is literally a slurring from ti te in that T and the SH, the making a ch sound. Ch -ch -ch -ch. So they just kind of slurred those two sounds together. Okay. So how would you say um, to erase con? How would you say that? To erase con. Hi. Hmm. So erase con. We can do. Keshte shimau. Yep. Which is the disappearing bit. Keshte shimau. And should Khan go at oh. the beginning of this or at the end of this? Uh don't think it matters. It kind of matters. Um, because verbs should go at the end of the sentence. To some extent, you can mm. have um a noun after a verb, but then you're making a relative clause. So if I said to disappear con forever. That is a different sentence than Khan, who was disappeared, right? Those illustrate so. two slightly different things. So in this case, you want it before the verb, which would be Khan. What particle do you think we need here? Khan uh, wa, no. Khan o kashite shimau? Yep, yeah, exactly. Khan o kashite shimau. Nice. What if I want to say I want to disappear con forever, which is a n? How do you think you could add a n to the sentence? A n. A n. A n. Right over there in our book. Oh, uh, a n. Hi, a n. What does a n mean again? A n means a forever or for eternity. Hmm. No, you can't say that. So, put some letters in here. Which one of these do you think AN cannot go? Can it go in X? Can it go in B? Can it go in M? I don't think it can go in M. You're correct. It can go in the other two locations, though, because in Japanese, the only thing that has to stay in a very specific location is the verb. Everything else has particles. Particles is what allows mm. you to move things. So since AN is going to be getting a particle, this means you can put it wherever as long as it's before the verb it's modifying. What particle do you think we need here? Do you think it's going to be de? For a tool or knee for the way in which something occurs. For the way, probably there. That's a good guess. It's actually knee. So, AN is the way something disappears. 
Debt would be saying mm-hmm. we're using AN as a force to make something disappear, which isn't really what we're doing. So, for example, Madol Seki, which is a magical stone, <laughs> that right there would probably take the debt. Using the magical stone, we make Khan disappear forever. So, debt is used for the physical tool that's used for this, mm-hmm. or the method. De is like the method or tool. So you could also say like hitori de, like all alone, I made someone disappear. And ni is basically the way the verb is done. You disappear it in a forever way. So you never find it again. Okay, so we want a and ni to be flopped into this. I'm just going to put it up here in the top. Nice. So a and ni ka no keshite shimau means to completely disappear kan forever. If you wanted this to sound like Khan did the disappearing kind of like to lay a little bit of blame on him a little bit, you might say mm. um Khan Jishin, which would be Khan himself. And then it's a little bit weird to use O with yourself, just a little bit. So Made is a little bit more natural to be kind of like, oh no, I completely made myself disappear for like like <laughs> forever. Um so it kind of means like perhaps this wasn't the goal necessarily of disappearing, but the disappearing, I myself am inc- included to the extent of being erased. Do you know what Ayaoka means? We talked about this like a little bit, but it was like for two seconds, like last time we met. Ayaoka. Hi. It okay. means like barely yeah. or almost. Um, almost is probably better in this context. Ayaoku. Almost. Almost. Hi. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we have this long sentence to read. Let's read it. Ah, uh, keredo majo tsushi no mado seki o nesun da to toki wa ayuku or ayaoku orichi made ien ni Hi. So let's go read this word again. How do you read this word? Ein. Yeah, ein. Ein. Eh, eh. Um. So Eien. tokoro data was something we touched on last week. Do you remember what tokoro tells us as far as like time? How it has to do with the time an action occurred. What time are we talking about when we see tokoro data? Tokoro. Tokoro means place. I'm guessing it's mm-hmm. like now. That's a good Ima. guess. It actually doesn't mean that. So tokoro is time and place at the same time. So a lot of times it's described as an action or a state of being because it includes the action and it also includes the time. So tokoro and toki, a lot of the time can be relatively mm. interchangeable if what goes behind it is a verb. So both of these take a verb underneath it. The difference is that tokoro focuses more on the action that occurred and toki refers more on the time. So it's focusing a little more. So in a way, the most important thing right here is that when this happened, this is more of our focus on the action. This action isn't really our focus for the sentence. Data though, do you know what data is? Data is like this, but past form this. Yes. Yes, it's the past form of des. You're correct. Des. So what you might assume seeing tokoro and data might mean right after the action, it actually has the opposite meaning of that. It means right before this could occur. So this is normally used um when this action does not actually happen, but it almost happens, basically. So in other words, mm. it's right before ore jishin made ae ni keshite shimau. What do you think that means? Ore jishin made ae ni keshite shimau. So when I, or when myself, disappeared completely. Forever, hi. That's basically what's it. So basically, right before I could almost be completely disappeared, something happened. Um, mm. Which, so I almost completely disappeared when? 
What time was that? Majutsu no madoseki o no sunda toki. Masunda toki. Ke toki masunda. So stole magic rock. So the time when I stole the magic rock. From the Hi, magician. perfect. So when I stole the magical rock, I barely almost disappeared myself completely. Awesome. So now, yeah? Uh, nothing. I was like, done. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm missing something here. But anyway, do slideshow. Okay, so now we're looking at kanji a little bit differently than how we normally do it, but this was how we originally did it. So we just see one kanji and then you're told to memorize it. This right here we saw oh. earlier, which was yoru. Yoru. Which, what does yoru mean? Yoru means night. Perfect. So let's try reading this word for me. Ah, uh, yoru osoku. Hi. Yoru osoku is late at night. Can you read this for me? Ah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Hi. So when you see this kanji being pronounced as guy attached to a word, this does not mean city. This means district. What a district is, is that if you have a city, a lot of times it will be split into different areas. So specifically, Wurumeto, which is the city the story is set in, has two districts. This one right over here is Taso, Tasogare Gai, the district of Tasogare. Tasogare is twilight, but feel free to just translate it as the Tasogare district. That is totally fine. Um, but yeah, so basically a district is basically a way mm. to split up a city. Um, do you remember how this kanji was read? Uh, tasogare gai. Perfect. Okay, so next we have a sentence for you to read. Can you read it for me? Uh, that is yoru, yoru osoku tasogare gai ni asatte. Atta. Hai. Ni atte. Hai. Do you know what atta means? So it's to have happened. Yes. To some inanimate object exists or action existed in what location? Da. So ni. Tasugare uh, gai. In tasugare gai. Yeah, in tasugare gai. When did this happen? When did this exist in the Twilight District? Yoru o osoku. So late at night. Perfect. Nice. So next is koto, which is definitely a word you would have seen quite a few times. It basically mm. is a word to refer to like multiple events sometimes. Um, or like the idea of event normally. So a lot of times we'll translate it as like thing. So it was a thing that happened or something like that. It's how um, koto tends to be translated. Um, koto also doesn't need a verb. So no, which is its like counterpart, needs like a verb behind it to illustrate a thing. Right. So sometimes you use koto, even though you're really only referring to one event, because you're not describing the event. Just saying it was event. Um, so koto is a way to generalize or eventify um, whatever comes before it. So right over here, can you read this for me? Tasukare nai o tasukare gai. No, koto da. Hi. This basically means it is about the Twilight District. So in this case, we're generalizing the Twilight District as an idea. So it might be, you know, the Twilight District, it's um it's shady or something. Like you just want to make a general statement about that um district. Mm. However, if I add a de into here, which in this case de is a location marker. The meaning changes quite a bit. Do you have any guesses what this sound means? Um, the Twilight District is 
<laughs> located somewhere is what I'm guessing. That's a good guess. But this de is saying something is located in Twilight District, which is the koto. So in other words, mm -hmm. this is saying it's something, it was a thing or an event that occurred in the Twilight District. Tasura de gai de no koto. So it was a thing of the Twilight District location. So something occurred there, basically, is what it's insinuating. Um, can you read this for me? Uh, yoru osoku heta? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Tasogare gai de no koto datta. Aye. So what does the datta mean in this context? So it's not tokoro datta, just normal datta. So datta. So it's like insinuating what's happening happened in the past or exactly previously. Or so it was before. something that happened where? De Tasokare Gai. So Twilight District mm -hmm. late at so, night. Exactly. So it's something that happened in the Twilight District late at night. So this word right here is dorobo. Do you know what dorobo meant? Dorobo. Uh is it the rock? No, uh Dorobo. To steal? Thief? Yes. Dorobo is a thief. Yes. Perfect. Sorry, I'm just going to delete those two things. So uniform. Dorobo. So now you're always remember the bowl part of dorobo. Um, this bowl, in case you're curious, means like pull. Like a pole mm -hmm. to hit somebody with. And our next word is fukuro. Do you have to know what a fukuro is? Fukuro. I don't. It's a bag. Um, it's oh. it's not like a kaban bag normally. It's kaban more like bag. like a paper bag, for example, be kami fukuro or some kind of like basic bag. A kaban is more like a purse or like a type of bag. So fukuro is just like a the ID like a sack kind of. Um, so this word started with doro and meant thief. You know what it ended with? Uh, dorobo. Hi, dorobo. Nice. <clears throat> you know what naka means? Uh, inside. Perfect. So you probably know this, but no is used when you want to describe use a noun to describe an adjective. As we saw earlier with majuchi no mado seki. How would you say a thief's bags insides? This hint is that this These order would bags. be a little bit different than the order in English. So we got naka, which is These inside, bags. fukuro, which is bag, and dorobo, which is thief. Thief's bags inside. So like, I guess that would be it. Dorobo no, fukuro no, naka. Um, Perfect. That's strange. No, that's exactly correct. Oh. Yep, you did the order perfect. So in English, if you were like directly translated, it, it seemed a little odd. Like inside of a thief of a, a I mean of a bag of a thief or a ba a thief's bags insides. That sounds a little weird. So yeah, we end with the insides and then I guess it's actually the same right now. The thief bags insides. Just the sentence right mm -hmm. here is weird in English. Instead we'd say the insides of a thief's bag if we were um saying the English more natural but yeah perfect okay so now your job is to remember the doro part of dorobo this means a mud dorobo. Curious. Doro. um yo in japanese has a meaning of like 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 something is similar in appearance to something this is a na adjective so it means it attaches to things like nouns and stuff using na can you read this word for me um, dorobo. Perfect. Dorobo. Hi. So, using yo, which I told you meant like, like a way to describe things similar. So, if you wanted to attach yo to something like a noun, you add na here because it is a na adjective. Do you have any guesses why there is a no here after majutsusi? When it's a sentence, majutsusi no yo na dorobo, which is a thief that is like a magician. Uh, yo no dorobo. So it, I guess the like, like na, dorobo becomes an adjective defining majutsushi. Hi, um, it's 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 an adjective defining dorobo. It is a thief that is like a magician. 
not a magician that is like a thief. Two totally different sentences. So. So, but my question to you is, do you know why there is a no here? Majichi no yo na dorobo. The na is here is because yo is a na adjective. Hi. Why do you think the no is so, here? No is basically saying majitsu shi. Huh. Well, majitsu shi is a oh, noun. Majitsu. This is what's going on. Hi. Majitsu shi is a noun. If you want to attach a noun to something, you need to have something to do it. So in Japanese, everything needs some kind of like particle or glue to it. So if you added like O, for example, that makes it into that Hi. is the object. So no is our glue to attach majitsu to other things like nouns and adjectives and stuff. So this no is here is literally here because we wanted to add majitsu to yo and majitsu is a noun. So theoretically, if we wanted to, we could have a verb over here, in which case we would not have a no because a verb does not take no. So I just wanted oh. to randomly point that out as um, we don't need that in the next sentence, but it's just something to kind of sit in your brain that this is here for something we already learned in the past, which is that majitsu is a noun. And this is here because yo is an adjective. So basically the form this is in tends to depend on what comes before it. Anyway, how would you say a knight like the <clears throat> insides of a thieves bag? A knight like an inside. Hi. Okay. So our main um, focus here is the knight. Just like the main focus in the previous sentence was dorobo. So this is going to go at the hi. end. So we have like the insides. So it'd be um hmm. Yo na yoru. Yo na yoru. That is correct. So are we going to be adding something in front of it or are we going to be adding something behind that? In front of it, we could probably say no naka. Yeah. Or could be. Uh, You're correct. Hi. Is naka a noun? What What is naka? Is it a verb? An adjective? Inside. So it's an adjective. That's a good guess. So naka is the act of insideness. Like it's not the act. It is it is not describing something in itself. Naka is just inside the noun. Like inside of a house. It's not really house insides. Inside Inciting. house. As you can see, if it's for example blue. Blue house. Mm. Perfectly grammatical. Inside's house. That, that doesn't make any sense. Because insides isn't an That's adjective outside. in English. It is also a noun. So because it's a noun, we're going to add no there. Mm. So what needs to go in front of naka? We know it's going to be a noun. We already bag. put a no there. Hi. How do you say that? That would be... Thieves bag is... Dobutsu. Dobutsu, no, dorobo. Dorobo is thief. Dorobo. And then bag. So... Dorobo no bag was fukuro. Hi, perfect. Yep, exactly what we want. Now, if I wanted this to be like a fully grammatical sentence, do we have to add anything to the end here? Because yoru is um, a noun. Hi. Oh, um, inside. So just say this. Yep. Okay, perfect. So right now we're at our halfway point. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'll see you in two seconds. Oops. Let's get the funny button.